Here's a short tour and an up-close look at the Neosho River near St. Paul, Kansas at low summer flow. This was taken in late July of 2017. We're starting out at the end of Trago Road on property owned by Jim and Twyla Wagner. Up until the 1951 flood, Maxwell Bridge, that's now on the far bank, was attached to what's now Wagner Land on the south side of the river. The river changed course, taking acres of land along with it. It's just an example of how much good land can be lost when erosion occurs. We'll take a close look at some efforts downstream to reduce bank loss and some of the severe erosion, especially at the sharp bends that the river takes through this area. Landowners on both sides of the river here have participated in a federal program to reduce bank erosion with a series of 31 Benway rock weirs. We're using aerial drone HD video to show the effects of these conservation efforts. Please take into account the extreme swings in water levels that are always common in this area. These low water level images, we hope, will help illustrate some of the successes in the conservation efforts and some areas that could definitely be improved. Between some of the rock weirs on the Wagner side, we are seeing some major scouring on the bank lines between the weirs and places where the topsoil, vegetation, and trees have been completely undermined and have fallen into the river basin. Meanwhile, the gravel bar on the north side has continued to grow as the current eats away at the higher banks. Here's a closer look at an area of concern. It's a deep circular cut in the turf in between the two Benway weirs, and the willow trees on the left are leaning over, and they're probably the next to go. These lands will certainly be swept away at the next high water, and these lands are not coming back. An upstream pass from the Riffle shows a bank looking more like the blade of a serrated knife than a straight line. The water is getting really close to the long-used service road and the really nice crops and food plots that are planted to shore up the remaining dry land. As we get closer to the newer Udall Road Bridge, you see some of the severe bank loss on the north side of the river. The modern Udall Road Bridge was built on another sharp bend in the river here, but this time a different method of rock assembly was used to protect the all-important bank that's under the bridge where the river turns. A closer look shows the heavy riprap boulders are lining the bank instead of extending out into the channel. This array of rock boulders has effectively prevented any apparent bank erosion above it. This bank has held steady since 1979, while many of the rock weirs installed in 2006 have not. Just downstream from the Udall Road Bridge, we find a rock weir that's no longer attached to the high bank. This one is blocking the channel flow like a mini dam, which forces most of the flow to either end, and that cuts further into the high bank and also into the gravel bar. This section has way too many fresh fallen trees and hunks of sod that are falling away from the bank. This strategic bank must be saved because it's a narrow strip of land between another bend in the Osho River. Here's the old bridge just downstream. Some believe these sandstone piers will be given away on either end and at some time this bridge frame may have to come down. It's just above the spot where Flat Rock Creek joins the river and the new pump house on the state refuge property on the north side here. Landowners on both sides of the river have experienced significant bank erosion, even around the areas of the Rip Rap Weirs. Jim Wagner wonders if the angle of the weirs from the bank is causing this excessive current swirling 
that ends up eroding the high bank and growing the gravel bar on the other side. This map illustrates the severe erosion at the narrow Oxbow Neck just beyond the Udall Road Bridge. The green lines here are the 1997 CLU or Crop Land Unit Boundaries. The aerial picture was taken in 2015. These red dots show 18 years of land loss. This illustration is over two years old. You can figure additional losses since then considering times like the prolonged high water periods this past spring. We know it takes a number of years to apply and implement any conservation project. We believe this needs to be studied and evaluated right away to prevent the river from breaking through at this narrow point. The river does break through here. Not only would Wagners lose access to this prime farm field, the lack of river flow around the Oxbow would certainly impact state wildlife officials' plans to pump refuge water from the Flat Rock Creek facility. As we evaluate the Benway Weir project over the last 11 years since its completion, we've got to ask two questions. Wouldn't the banks be better protected with large riprap lining along the bank? And would the Benway Weirs cause less amount of swirling if they pointed downstream instead of at a 90 degree angle from the bank? Either way, if left unattended, these problems are going to get nothing but worse.